Let's write another form, the integrated form of the first law of thermodynamics. Delta U is Q plus W. So what we're going to do is take this differential form of the first law of thermodynamics and integrate it. So let's uh, integrate the left side, du. Okay. So we'll integrate that and we'll do definite integral from the initial u1 to the final u2 du. And I hope you remember from calculus, essentially we're uh, integrating uh, 1. That is equal to u2 minus u1. And remember this was the final state. This was the initial state. So we can write final minus initial, use the symbol delta. So this is just delta u. All right, good. I integrate the right-hand side of the differential form of the first law of thermodynamics. So let's integrate from q1 to q2 of dq. Now, this is going to be a problem. This you can do because u is a, an exact differential. So we could get a delta u here. dq, on the other hand, is an inexact differential. What does that mean? Exact differential implies the integral does not, does not depend on path. In other words, going from the initial state here to the final state here, doesn't matter which way you go. So here you have u1, here you have u2. You can go this way, uh, you can go some other path, you can go some other path. Delta u is a constant. No matter which path you go, you get the same uh, delta u. An inexact differential uh, implies that the integral does depend on path. So for instance, if you go from the initial state to a final state, actually this is um, th this is <laughs> technically incorrect. If somebody, uh, say a calculus teacher, were looking at this, he or she would cringe. Uh, just let me say this is the initial and this is the final. All right, so the initial the final state depends on which way you go. It's an inexact differential. So it's really not a delta. That's why we put Q here. Q is the amount of heat transferred, which depends on how you go from one place to another. How do we know that it depends on path? Well, uh, experience tells us that. And similarly, if we go from the initial to the final state of dW, dW also is an inexact differential. So it depends on path. So here we have to write we write W. That's the total amount of work done in going from the initial state to the final state. And that uh, total amount of work done depends upon the path you go from the initial to final. In contrast, internal energy uh, is an exact differential. The integral does not depend upon path. Okay, so that's the integrated form, two different forms of the first law, the differential form and the integrated form. Now, remember from introductory chemistry, internal energy U is a state function, and W and Q are not. What's the defin definition of a state function? State function from introductory chemistry. A state function means that does uh, the change, delta, does not depend on path. Well, we already know that that means that the function is an exact differential. So now we've taken what we learned in introductory chemistry and now built upon that. That's a lot of what chemistry is. You've learned something and you think you know it and then you go to another course, advanced course, and then, yeah, you knew it, but you didn't know the whole story. Well, here's the whole story. And we'll get even more of the whole story when we talk about Maxwell's relations and uh, more information about exact differentials. State function, that means that I uh, use a state function and W and Q are not state functions. They depend upon how you go from the initial to final state. Therefore, they're inexact differentials and uh, you can't write a just a one initial or final minus initial uh, for that. As we said, the engineers divided uh, energy in terms of heat and work and let's look at some examples of work. One is muscle contraction. Uh, there, work is done as you, uh, your muscles, say you're pulling on something and you move it a certain distance and you apply a certain force with your muscle. To figure out how much work you did, you multiply force times length. Let's look at engines, uh, say an internal combustion engine. What you do is you burn some gasoline and that increases the pressure in a piston 
and that uh, piston is pushed down, the volume is decreased. So it's a pressure times volume, uh, and that's how much uh, PV work, pressure volume work, an engine does. Here's a new concept, probably. Uh, it turns out that uh, chemicals have chemical potential. And that is, for instance, in a chemical reaction, you got reactants and products. As the reactants go to products, the reactants have some chemical potential, a high chemical potential, and as they go to products, they go to lower chemical potential. And so molecules, a number of molecules more precisely, uh, would be the what is changing here. So you got potential and chemical uh, and number of molecules. And you might remember from the last lecture, these are natural uh, variable pairs. You got an extensive and intensive variable. Force and length are natural. You multiply them together, you get energy, which the engineers have said that's going to call that work. Same way here, pressure and volume, they're two natural uh, variables, an intensive and extensive variable, and you multiply them together, you get energy or work. And finally, we'll learn more about this later on in the course. Uh, you have chemical potential and number of molecules, and you multiply these two together, you get energy or work. All right, so that's the uh, first part of the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, be sure if you have questions, bring them to the lecture. 